Having an elephant as the main character of your platform game, well, it doesn't seem like a good idea to me. They're not really the most agile of beasts, are they? And without mean to sound harsh, they're, well, robustly built, aren't they? Yes, there are plenty examples of fairly unagile platform characters all over the history of video games, from overweight plumbers to eggs sporting boxing gloves. And you know, Barbar -Bar isn't overly athletic in this platform game, really. He has a slow lollop as a walk and spends at least half of the playtime in some sort of burden-carrying vehicle. He knows his limitations. Anyway, let's get to the history of that regal pachyderm Barbar. -Bar. While a lot of us will remember his early 90s cartoon, he was originally, of course, birthed in literature, which sounds messy for the Waterstones involved. The first book, penned by French author Jean de Bronoff, has an interesting backstory in itself. You see, Bronoff took his tale from his wife, who used to tell their children it from her own mind. What's yours is mine, wife. What's mine is mine also, eh? In reality, Cecile was incredibly modest and asked to have her name removed as she believed her contribution was relatively minor. I mean, apart from the whole original concept, the characters and the story, what exactly did he do, Cecile, eh? The story of the original book, Historie de Baba, is, in truth, a little bit Game of Thrones. It tells the story of a young African elephant named Barbar, whose mother is killed by a big game hunter. Barbar escapes and in the process leaves the jungle in exile. He visits Paris and returns to bring the benefits of civilization to his fellow elephants. So far, so colonization-y. Just as he returns to his community of elephants, their king tragically dies from eating a poisonous mushroom. Because of his travels and civilization, Baba is chosen king of the Elephant Kingdom. He marries his cousin, Celeste, and they subsequently have children and teach them valuable lessons. Gee whiz, like not sleeping with your cousins. That would be a good start. So yeah, regicide, incest, violence, even a Jon Snow-esque character trajectory for young Baba. Hell, it's like Joffrey dying of the mushroom poisoning there as well, isn't it? Not bad for a kid's book, this then. The adventures of Barbar -Bar were adapted several times into both television and movies, but it was the Canadian-French production of Barbar -Bar produced by animation studios Nelvana Limited that most of viewers of this video will probably remember. Nelvana had previously worked alongside New Line Cinema and Astral Films the previous year on Barbar -Bar the Movie. 65 episodes of the show were produced, running for 23 minutes each, and they were shown by CBC in Canada, HBO in the States, and the good old BBC in the UK. The first two series covered Barbar's history as he regaled his many adventures to his children, which, much like How I Met Your Mother, make me wonder where you find children prepared to sit and listen to such narcissistic bragging for days on end. As soon as I start explaining how cool it was to my son that I knocked the boss off the 10-floor pagoda in the first Tenchu game in 1999, before jumping after him to finish him off, he will immediately get bored and wander off to find a packet of quavers. From the third series onwards, the story centres around Barbar, -Bar, his family and his friends in the present day as they go around doing very royal things like covering up serious sex crimes, having opulent coronations during a cost of living crisis and getting interviewed by Oprah and getting pegged by your wife's friend. Do they though? No, they don't. Barbar -Bar won a series of awards and well-loved across the world, enough to get a revival series ten years later, with Barbar -Bar and his pals travelling to exotic locales via a hot air balloon. Barbar -Bar spawned two video games, a preschool PC collection of minigames published by Mindscape called Barbar -Bar and the Royal Coin Caper, and the game we will be looking at today, Barbar -Bar to the Rescue on the Game Boy Advance. Barbar -Bar to the Rescue was developed by Danish coders Sirius Games, who had previously made other licensed Game Boy Advance games based on the Koala Brothers, the Care Bears, and the never-ending Land Before Time movie franchise. Seriously, there are 14 of them. 14! The game was published by defunct Absolute Licence Whores Game Factory, who did games on everything from Postman Pat to Biker Mice from Mars. The story of Barbar -Bar to the rescue sees a serious mishap taking place. Barbar's two sons, Pom and Alexander, along with their cousin Arthur, take refuge during a game of hide and seek with charmless monkey Zephyr in the basket of Barbar's hot air balloon. I can't help but think they're playing hide and seek incorrectly. Hide in different places, you dick faced idiots. 
It's all that royal inbreeding, isn't it? Disaster happens when the rope gets loosened accidentally. Could it have been an accident or an elephant Prince Harry? The balloon careers off into the horizon and rather than use his royal communications and air force, the African king takes it upon himself in a peak of panic to follow in another handily placed airborne dirigible alone. So much for royal protocol and security there. The first level finds the panicked pachyderm in the clouds in a 2D side-scrolling affair with the balloon scooching along in warmish pursuit. The A button lofts the hot air balloon skywards with the aim being to make it across the stage without colliding with too many obstacles, else you'll deplete your score. You see, you can't actually attain a game over status as such, which is a common trait across all of the nine stages. This is clearly a game aimed at much younger, more frustratable an audience, as if the subject matter hadn't indicated that already. Barbar, also in another trait exhibited across all of the levels, collects crowns to boost his score, as is the nature of royalty and the 1%. The parasitic nature of being extremely wealthy is to hoard all the wealth while people starve around you, and so these actions should come as no surprise. You're a dick, Barbar. Dependent on the colour of the greed juice or whatever it is circulating the collectibles, you get different points for scooping it at the right time. Once he settles down after reaching the small hut at the end of the stage, it's off to the next one. Maybe he's doing a bit of the old right of the first night in that shed with some newly wedded bride elephant as the husband sobs outside. And at three of these cuck sheds, and you'll move on to level two. Level 2 sees Barbar on his umbrella stands, in other words his elephant feet, as he starts the first of a clutch of platform ventures. He's crashed his balloon, the clumsy buffoon, well that rhymed, and he needs to make it across some wet terrain. And he does this with an extremely ponderous walk. It's quite a confident walk, but it's very ponderous. Not great for a platform stage. Also, you won't see any enemies as such, presumably because enemies in a jungle-based platform tend to be animals. And well, they're not going to be attacking the king. That would be regicide. I go in prison for a long time or off with their heads. He has this awkward looking animation where he grips a vine to swing over a gap or a river. It looks and feels terrible, but it's not really a problem control wise. It just feels very dull. Barbar can fall in the water and drown, but it doesn't deplete lives. It only reduces some score multipliers. Another three stages of this, and we get to another level type. Barbar meets a chap who, clearly fearful of the power exhibited by the monarch, immediately hands over the keys to his sports car. Barbar, being an entitled prick, takes them and leaves the poor creature on the roadside lamenting his loss, or maybe filled with some sort of patriotic pride, I guess. Barbar treats the car like absolute trash, running into crowns left on the road, jumping ravines over ramps, there really hasn't been this lack of care in a vehicle by a royal family member since late 1997. Is that too soon? No, it's probably okay. I apologise if you're offended. Probably don't care. It's just as twitchy as it looks and the ramps will only allow themselves to be leapt if Barbar racks up enough speed. Not that it matters. The crowns, if you're in the mood to collect them, aren't at a particular height, so you could just sort of reverse into them from the ground if you so do wish. There's no time limit to this stage, there's no real consequences at all. It's almost too on the nose about the hyper wealthy in many respects. Is this a clever satire masquerading as a preschooler distraction? Probably not. After all, there's not a cutscene where Barbar's mother throws a load of money at a sex traffic calf in order to make it shut up. Mm. Naturally, he crashes the car and following not giving a toss about that, the clumsy crowned menace finds himself on the savannah in another platform a bit with more platformy vines and holes than the previous, but still just as clunky and noticeably very short. Oh, and it's on fire, which can be combated by Barbar filling his trunk with puddle and then gobbing that puddle out. He probably flicked a luxury cigar out of the side of the car on his way there. A pair of hippos are next to give up their possessions as Barbar pulls rank and takes their speedboat. It's identical to the car section, only a bit wetter. Next, and dear God, it's the ice level. Only it's not really. It's not particularly icy or slippery. It just looks it. There's a very 
Aldi wooden ski lift because Barbar presumably taxes his subjects too much. The grey bastard. Oh, King Barbar, I'd be glad to give you my motorbike because you're a terrible parent. I'm sure it'll get returned to me. Who has spent most of my adult hippo life saving up for it? Yeah, sure, take it. Go on, take it, take it. I'm so full of pride right now. And we're off as Barbar goes into a mode similar to the boat and car sections, but this time on a motorbike. And also this time, it scrolls in different directions. Oh, look, a bit of late stage innovation. It still handles like a greased whippet in a flat roof pub full of lusty Yorkshiremen though. Get through your motorbike adventure and we're back on Barbar's flat feet again for the platformer mode for the final time as he finds that his kids have landed on an island. Well, he's in trouble there. Surely this must be set on a boat because we've discovered he can't swim. Oh, he can now, can he? Yes, it's not set on a boat. He swims there. He sort of gets up the onto the land every now and again and then jumps back in the water. Why he couldn't swim earlier, I don't know. It's never explained. Much like Sonic, but without the anxiety music or the playability, you have to find bubbles and air pockets to keep yourself alive. These stages are probably the best of the platformer sections because there's almost a bit of length to them and you can explore a bit. So yeah, it's potentially the best level in the game and it's a swimming level. That's a bit of a worry, isn't it? But after all this swimming about, eventually it gets Barbar to his princely offspring and now we can use their balloon that they didn't crash to get them back home. That way the unelected lineage can continue and they can sort of carry on doffing their caps at elephants that have just been lucky enough to fall out of the correct packer womb. So we return via the way we arrived, only gods in a smiting mode after all that mistreatment of Barbar's citizens by the privileged, scrotal-skinned, long memory haver. So yes, much a repeat of the first level for the very last level. So you arrive back and good boys don't do it again. Now go off and do it's a knockout and don't appear in the African sun sucking a bald man's toes or claiming you lost your virginity to a zebra in a long grassed part of the Serengeti. Thanks. Journalists of the time did not seem bothered by the existence of the burly king himself. So unfortunately, I haven't got any reviews to share with you from that time. So you're just going to have to listen to me. Just know it's this. It's very easy and it's very simple. There's probably a joke about a particular royal I could make there, but I've been mean enough. Blame Barbar to the rescue. It made me very cynical indeed. Vive the bloody republic in this case. Next up, shall we have a look at another member of royalty? As seeing as this one went so well. Yeah, this one is a prince. Prince Valiant on the NES. Ooh, European exclusive. That'll be fun, won't it? Like, subscribe, and K thanks. Bye. Bye bye bye. Bye bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.